Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, our global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. Today is the July the 28, 22nd, 2018, and I'm going to demonstrate you our CCIE Collaboration V2 um, or a pod or rack that we are kind of building. Well, as you know, the July 23rd, Cisco is going to start testing CCIE Collaboration V2, and therefore everything is moving toward a cloud-based um, uh, network. Well, we are also moving along with the same line. Well, I'm going to give you an introduction and to show you what our data centers kind of look like. Now, at Voice Bootcamp, yeah, if you want to get an idea, this is what our data center looks like. Um, we have a fully redundant core. Uh, yeah, it, 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 by the way, keep in mind, Voice Bootcamp is a training company, so we're not a mission critical um, data center like a service provider. But we have designed our infrastructure just like a service provider or a big um, data center. We have two legs in the data centers, as you can see on the left hand side. Uh, this is our delta leg uh, right here. And then on the right hand side is our alpha leg that is our backup. We have two core uh, routers at the top that connects to our uh, service provider. And this core router is basically acting as the internet gateway, firewall, and some sort of security. Now, we don't have a very sophisticated firewall because we don't really care. Uh, none of our uh, official documents are actually internally stored. They're all in cloud. However, um, so we're not really concerned about breaking or anything. But, but we do have an adequate security to ensure that uh, we have protected network. So we do have two routers. We also have two VPN uh, concentrators that allows our students to log in uh, to our VPN, our infrastructure 24 seven throughout the world. Uh, we con constantly have a student log logging into our env environment and for practice purposes. So those, that is our uh, outside parameter. Uh, then we have two layer three switches, which is on the left hand side, you see our uh, Delta switch that is 6509 with 10 gig module, uh, SUP3, uh, or 720 rather, uh, which has a direct uh, 10 gig connection to our alpha switch. So there is a redundant um, link right there. And then we have a 10 gig connection from the 6509 that goes to our uh, HP Blade server. We are using HPC 7000 Blade server, which can host up to 16 Blade fully redundant uh, power. Um, I think we have about six power supplies on that uh, highly um, redundant system. Uh, it has two 10 gig connection, one going to each switch uh, acting as primary and secondary. On the HP 7, uh, C7000, we use uh, H what we call, um, what do we call that? Uh, oh, virtual connect. So if you were to take a look at that, This is our um, HP platform. Uh, now, everything, all the virtual machines, all the ESXer hosts, they're all running on this HP platform. Uh, platform. So these are the only two servers that we're actually uh, hosting everything that we have. We have approximately close to almost 250 virtual machines that are running here based on uh, various pods. Now this is, like I said, one of the very few training company in the world that has a very sophisticated network like that, that is constantly running 24-7 uh, throughout uh, the year. And this is our Blade server, as you can see. So everything is redundant. The I.O. is redundant. You got the uh, HP Virtual Connect switch. That is redundant. You got 16 Blade. They're all, every, everybody is redundant connections. If you look at the port mapping, you will see that every uh, Blade has two physical uh, virtual port uh, network card. One goes to each um, blade, so that if in case one goes down, the other one goes down. The blade, the whole uh, chassis itself is highly redundant with a six power supply, and three connects to grid one, and other other three connects to different grid. All right, so that is our um, server side. Now we have at, at the bottom right here we have storage right here as you can see those are 10 terabyte storage on each side and our storage server we use uh, freenas 
for now. Well, you know, it's cheap and it's easy to uh, work with it. So I'll just show you one. We have free NAS and each, uh, we have two of them, uh, one for pod one to five. So this is for the pod one to five. And this will connect uh, directly, to, well, both uh, blade has access to this uh, free NAS. Uh, but we use this particular one for pod one to five. Now this is almost 10 terabyte, as you can see, uh, available space, 9.4 terabyte. And we have two of them and they are highly redundantly connected. Uh, they're also connected through aggregated link so that, uh, you know, in case there's a one link failover, second one will kick in. So, yeah, so this is our infrastructure. Now, we also have a Pearson View network in our Toronto office, uh, which is connected to this pod. And if you take a look at our pod, now right on the left-hand side is where it connects to our pod. Now, from our alpha and delta switch for pod 1 to 5, will go to uh, uh, on Delta. And these are the top portion that you can see right here is my CCIE pod, followed by the bottom portion that you see right here is my UCCE pod, contact center. I believe we are one of the large uh, company that has um, uh, the UCCE contact center lab that are available for ranting purposes. Uh, very few company even have a uh, complete UCCE lab. All right, so just to show you our CCI pod that we have developed for you guys, we use a vCenter called, we, uh, well, our vCenter name is called VC Tango. And when you log in, you can log in user either using the vSphere client HTML5 or um, the Flex client, which is kind of like a Flash. So I'll go ahead and uh, use the Flash because I'm more used to that, comfortable with that. Uh, administrator. Now we have about, uh, each um, pod has about three ESXi host. Those are quad-core, uh, Xeon quad-core uh, machine. Uh, approximately, they're running pr um, fully loaded at this moment. So as you can see, this is my pod one uh, to 10 data centers that I have. For each pod, we have a separate data center. And in each data center, we have a, a cluster. And what's the advantage of VMware cluster is that uh, in cluster, it allows us to distribute the virtual machine dynamically between the host when one host is suffering from, let's say, uh, resource uh, utilization quite uh, seems to be high. So if a, v a VMware sees that one of the virtual machine that you're trying to run on one, the, one of these hosts, but the host is doesn't have enough CPU or memory to run it, it will simply slowly migrate it to the secondary, uh, second server. So our um, pod are highly clustered between those three ESXi host per pod. Now, as you can see, each pod has three uh, ESXi host, 201, 202, 203, and they are part of a cluster. Now, cluster is designed so that it moves the virtual machine dynamically whenever one host is experiencing resource problem. So even though it is a training center, even though you are only accessing something, you know, like call manager or UCCE, but we actually backend our infrastructure is designed to be a, like a real data center for a company. And funny part is that, oh, well, the best part about this is that this is actually built by my students in Toronto. So we get all our students to help me build this cluster on a once in a while to get hands-on experience. Uh, we, we, we have a program in Toronto where we provide users with Canadian experience so that they, they, they get to learn uh, how to build a data center from ground zero. Anyway, uh, just to get back to UCCIE, so this is our UCCIE uh, pod one cluster. In pod one cluster, you have a bunch of virtual machines as you can see right here. Uh, they are for CCNP and CCIE. We always use same network infrastructure for CCNP training and CCIE collaboration training uh, because we always keep it in very close to each other. So anybody who takes CCNP collaboration training with Voice Bootcamp, they pretty much have 70 to 80 percent uh, covered for CCIE. So we have two, uh, three routers, as you can see, that are virtual machine. Now, as you know, that version CCF2 
of CCIE collaboration, Cisco is moving away from physical router, so no more 2800, no more 2900, no more PVDM, no more T1, E1. Everything is now virtual machine. So we have a HQ router, side B router, and side C router. Now, the exam is uh, the CCIE collaboration V2 is coming tomorrow, which is July the 22nd, uh, 23rd. We still don't know the topology. We don't know how the uh, network is going to be laid out. We don't know how many routers is going to have or how many, uh, what kind of uh, site you're going to have. So what we have done, we have built the pod to be very dynamic so that you can move uh, with the changing certain network settings, you can just move them back and forth to any VLAN that you want to and just change the IP address. Every student have full access to their pod, including the VMR access. So if they need, need if so if they need to customize something, they can easily do that for uh, by themselves. All they have to do is go to the virtual machine settings, and from the drop down menu, from see the, you got three network card right there. So having a virtual router, a cloud router having three network card means a router with three interface, and they're all one gig interface. So if you want network adapter or NIC one or Giga interface one to be connected to VLAN 10, you will create a network settings called show more network and choose VLAN 10. And if you want Ethernet adapter two to be in VLAN 20, simply change to VLAN 20 and you can simply move the router back and forth. So it's very dynamically done. So I'm just gonna show you one. Uh, on 2001, I can go to virtual switch all these ESXi ho hosts are connected to a network card that is already trunk. So and the switch level, I can just, right now I have VLAN 11 for my pod. I can just simply go and say, you know what? No, I wanna create another VLAN. Let's call this virtual switch. We will use the same V switch zero. And then I'm gonna call this, let's say site B a VLAN. And we're gonna make 65 as our site B VLAN, for example, okay? And once this is done, I gotta make sure that I choose a host that is already on that, uh, I choose a virtual machine that is on that to a host, 2001, so 201. So here you can see that VLAN 65 is created. You can just simply go and if you want this router to be in, v, uh, in that particular VLAN, you just have to make sure that that is on that host. Now you gotta configure that on all the hosts most likely. So we gotta find maybe this one. No, not even that. Let me check. We're gonna find something that is on that two air. Yeah, there you go. So let's say this ver this server you want to be in VLAN side B. So you simply go there and change it to side B VLAN. See, that's it. And you just have to assign the side B VLAN IP address to your virtual machine. Your topology is changed right away. All right. So no physical cabling. No need to worry about you know logging to switch or anything. All right, so we have our HQ routers, which is basically a virtual router. When you connect to the HQ router, you will see initial configuration just like as if you log a console into a router. And if I say no to that, it says terminate auto install. You say yes, you guys are all familiar with that, uh, you know, based on your previous working with your uh, 2800 series or 2900 series. So this is, uh, a good thing because you don't have to invest a lot of money and time on um, you know buying equipment you know not you know before you have to buy 2900 series then you then you need to invest on PVDM then you need to invest on um, T1 card or E1 card then you have a T1 um, or a PS10 switch so you know it's a huge huge saving right now all you need a good server uh, quad core uh, CPU, maybe 32 gig memory, one terabyte hard drive, all this can be purchased with a less than $300 on eBay. Yes. All right, so uh, that's probably just taking, taking a sweet time. So we have, um, as you can see, HQ publisher, HQ uh, side, uh, HQ subscriber. We have site B publisher. What we are thinking about doing is also adding site C publisher as well. So just in case if you need to have it, you can have it. Uh, we have Unity connection, UCCX, presence, Unity Express. Can you imagine that? Unity Express in VMware. That's a lot of uh, headaches, uh, you know, gone from the previous network module that we had to buy. 
Now, this is our, we have CMS and uh, Express, uh, Tele Express Y C and E as well. Now, I just uploaded the C, and I'm gonna upload the E as soon as I finish this video. Now, we also have uh, our UCC pod, Active Directory. We have a bunch of other servers that are related to our contact center enterprise. So one single pod serving all three, uh, actually four different courses. You can do CCNP collaboration on this pod. You can do CCIE collaboration on this pod. You can do CCNA collaboration on this pod. You can do your UCCE practice. You can do your UCCX practice. You can even do finance practice and you can do uh, CVP practice on a single pod that is very dynamically set up uh, so that um, you don't have to move around or uh, go to different places for different things so yeah so this is our pod, uh, pod right now we're still working on the outline where we're developing our CCIE collaboration study kit for version 2 uh, feel free to take a look at it we have uh, uploaded some sample uh, this month we're going to upload um, about 10 to 15 videos on it. You are welcome to take, uh, you know, uh, sign up for our newsletter so that you can get a free update and invitation to download free labs. So yeah, go ahead our website, go to CCIE collaboration uh, kit, and you will be, you know, just go ahead and enter your email address, first name and last name. We, we don't send too many emails, probably two emails a month, highest. Uh, sometimes I even forgot to send an email. So, uh, it, you know, it, is, it won't get a spam from us uh, on a regular basis. But you know what, what if we, even if we do send it, it is information and it is uh, lab and lectures free. You know, a, a one email, if it increases your knowledge a little bit, why not, right? Uh, so the maximum number of email we send a month is two uh, highest highest very rare cases we send three emails a month so yeah feel, feel free to join our newsletters uh, feel free to visit our youtube channel at voice uh, youtube.com slash voice bootcamp dot, uh, voice bootcamp uh, visit our facebook page and send us uh, an email if you have any con any information or if you'd like any courses if you'd like to take any courses with us we have a uh, huge packages going on. Um, it is our 10th year anniversary coming up uh, pretty soon. So we are offering a lot of promotions for our client. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, hopefully you got a rough idea how to build your own pod. Just get one or two server, build EC, uh, install ECC uh, VMware ESXi. You can download it for free, fully licensed version. Uh, there's a free version that comes with it somehow get a hold of the iso file from cisco you know bag your friend call your call your uh, buddies call your account manager get the isos install them and start learning you can probably do most of the work yourself but if you think that you want to take it to the next uh, you know notch uh, next level and you would like to take a training take a look at our website at www.voicebootcamp.com we do de we deliver training any country in the world if you have two or three or four people who wants to do on-site training, let us know. We will fly to your locations, wherever it is. We're very competitive price, very cheap compared to other people and compared to what we provide. We provide 200 hours of lab access for every student, provide full uh, self-study kit, free retake for up to two years. So your investment is guaranteed. So thanks for your time. Have a uh, nice day, folks. And for those who are preparing for CCI Collaboration V2, good luck.